Hello guys, it's time to talk about end games once again. Um, after lesson 100, we talked about middle game in lesson 101. Then we went over your training plan. Now we're going to talk about end games, and then the next lesson is going to be about a new opening. Now this specific end game that we're going to go over is extremely easy, guys. Let me actually go here um, to make it bigger. It's basically what to do when we have king and rook versus king and bishop now this end game is so simple that we're going to explain it quickly and since we're going to have some time at the end i'm going to just play a few blades to see if maybe if maybe we get this end game in one of those games which is highly unlikely but anyways we're gonna have those games at the end first let's take care of this because this is something that you need to know there's no reason for you to get to this end game and losing it if you have the bishop now most people most of us when we learn this the only thing that we heard was if you have the bishop send your king to one of the corners opposite to the color of the bishop and it's going to be a draw that's all like we didn't get at least myself i don't remember getting many examples or anything like that i just knew this you're expected to calculate and knowing that principle you're supposed to make it a draw and to be honest it is fairly easy to do that if you look at any end games book they do not dedicate much time to this end game they're, they're gonna give you what i'm going to give you which is one example when the king is on the right corner so you're gonna see how they defend and you're gonna have another example for when the king goes to the wrong uh to the wrong corner so you need to know if you're the one with the rook you need to know how to take advantage of it so i'm going to do exactly that i'm going to show you two positions and then I'm going to play this position against the engine, guys. So I'm going to defend it against the engine. You're going to see me go into the right corner. And after that, I'm going to play a few blitz. And hopefully we have some fun and we get some value out of those blitz games. So with that said, let me show you the first position. Okay, so here we are. This is assuming, guys, this is the worst case scenario that you could get if the king goes to the right corner. So I'm going to the corner opposite to the bishop. And you can see the reason why we do this is because now the bishop could block the checks from the rook from the rank and from the file. So anytime the rook puts us in check, we're going to be blocking. And this is going to be effective because of this um, stalemate uh, possibility. So if now they just try to hold it and they do something like just a tempo with the rook, it is the black pieces to move and the king is in stalemate position. The bishop is blocked, is pinned. There's nothing that the black pieces here could do. So that's why this is going to work. Think of the king and rook versus king checkmate, but this time they also have a bishop and that bishop is blocking so anytime that you send the king to the corner opposite to the color of the bishop this is going to be easy to defend unless you just do something very uh, like if you blunder the bishop or, or something like that but it's fairly easy and you're gonna see it when i defend against the engine you're gonna see how without too much thought i will be able to defend this position so from the position that we had before um the king decided to go to one of the light squares because their king is because their bishop is a dark square bishop so that's how we got here of course if the white pieces want to make progress they need the king to get active and sort of corner my king and then the rook comes either from here or from here but either way we're going to be fine look just to show you if the rook comes around trying to come over here and then if we block they take well now we're gonna do check and it's gonna be the same thing if they go here i go back they cannot put me in check like before. The king is in the way. If they go over here, it's going to be stalemate. And then if we go back one move, let's say that when I put him in check, they just go over here. Look, check. It's going to be the same thing. And of course, if they just go over here, well, you could do the same thing. The king is not here anymore. If they do something like check, then I block one more time. There's nothing they could do. So guys, I hope that this easily shows you why it's important for you to, if you're defending, put your king on one of the corners opposite to the color of the bishop. So I repeat it like five times in a month, in a year from now, when you get this position, you're not going to forget it. Now, what if from this position in front of you, the black pieces got confused, they had never heard about this endgame, and they just were pushed to the corner, which is the same color as the bishop. Now I'm going to show you how it's not so easy for them to defend, but even if you're the one with the rook, you have to know what you're looking for, guys. It's not enough to just say, oh, they went to the wrong corner and I'm going to win. No, now you have to know that it's all about, since the king is cornered, 
it's all about looking for that checkmate on the back rank. Just the same thing that we learned on the rook and king versus king, but we have to make sure that the bishop is not, of course, going to interfere. We have to make sure that the king does not escape. Like in this case, what I'm looking for, just to give you some, uh, just to give you an idea, if, if it's the white pieces to move, I'm looking for something like this. This is going to be the perfect move to hit the bishop and threaten checkmate on the back rank. Of course, if they let us get the bishop, we know how to do the king and rook checkmate. Or the other thing they could do is move the bishop by controlling that square. But then everything that you need to do, guys, is look for the same thing. So now where can I put the rook so that the rook attacks the bishop and tries to enter the back rank through a different square? Well, that's going to be, of course, b7. So we go b7, fork, and we're going to get to do checkmate. Now, the only way to control b8 is by going to these squares where we take. They could also just go there to block, but we're going to pin it and we get it after. Or they could do bishop c5, hoping to block. But after the check and they block, now we could do a tempo. We just go rook c8. And guys, now the only move that the black pieces could do is move to h8. Notice it's similar to what we have before on the other corner, but on the other corner, this would be stalemate. Because remember, the other corner, this file wouldn't be here. So there's nowhere for the king to move. But in this case, they could go to this corner and that's going to be checkmate. Now, this is what happens when they go to the wrong corner. So now you know, if you're the one with the rook, your opponent made the mistake, you know how to take advantage of it. Now, let's say that in this same position, it is the black pieces to move. So this is going to be for you to see how you could win it, of course, regardless of what they do. But also, if you already got into this position, you could also see how the side with the bishop could put up some resistance. It's not going to be enough, but they could definitely do something about it. Now, if I'm the black pieces, let's say I just go somewhere where the rook cannot attack me. Because remember, if I go here, the rook could go here with, with that fork. If I go to c3, the same thing. That rook is always going to find the double attack on the bishop and the back rank checkmate. So what if I just go to g1 behind the king so that the rook doesn't have that double attack? Well, even if that's the case, bishop g1, what we're going to do, guys, is start chasing the bishop. So remember, don't try to memorize the specific moves. Try to understand why we're doing the moves. Because again, in a week, in a month, in a year, when you get this, you're not going to remember everything. Just try to remember, oh, I remember when we had that lesson, I had to do this because of, of this reason. So what we're looking for here is harassing that bishop until we can get a situation where we attack the bishop and also one of these squares that I need to do checkmate. So here we go rook f1, and now the bishop needs to be very, very careful. Something like this, we're just going to be doing skewer. So we hit the bishop. When the bishop moves, checkmate. Or even if it's not checkmate, if they go here, same thing, guys. Check, and then we just do a waiting move for that king to go away, and we do the checkmate, right? So with that in mind, let me go over here. So I just attack the bishop, and now what would be a good square for that bishop to, again, put some resistance? Well, the move is going to be bishop h2, and at this point, again, I'm going to go after the bishop. So I hit... The bishop with rook h1, then bishop g3, I keep hitting it, and now look, any of these squares again, the bishop is going to be attacked, and then the rook could enter the back rank. This move is not going to work because of the discovered attack, so we go towards the bishop with a discovered check, and it's going to be the same case if the bishop goes here. Now, what's left for the bishop? Well, the bishop could go to f2, or to h2. Now, bishop h2 or f2, guys, it doesn't matter. We're going to go rook g2, and now the bishop has no squares. This two, we take it. This one, we have the same uh, tactic. And then any of these squares, you already know what we would do. So let's say that they just go bishop e5. Then finally, we do that skewer, hitting the bishop and that square on the back rank. And after bishop d6, it's very easy. Check, only move, and then after rook c8, the king has to move, and we deliver checkmate. So again, guys, bottom line, what you need to know about this very simple endgame is if you're the one defending, if you're the one with the bishop, you want to go to one of the corners, op oop, not that one, <laughs> opposite to the color of the bishop. So if my bishop is a light square bishop, I want to go here, 
That way, my king, my bishop can be blocking the checks from the rook. So let's say uh, they do something like this check. I'm going to go towards it. Uh, guys, some pretty bad moves just for you to see. So I'm going to go towards that corner. Let's say the uh, king keeps attacking. I'm going to go there. And if they have this check, then I had in that corner. There is nothing now they could do. Again, if they did this move right now, I could easily just move to the side. Nothing else I could do. Check again. I go here. A move like this. Well, I'm just going to move, let's say, here. Guys, the only way you're going to get in trouble is if you bronze the bishop again or if you put the bishop too close to the king. It's not going to be so easy to defend. Like if you had gone somewhere like this, like so close to the king, they could easily do check and then hit the bishop and that square and you cannot even do check because you're too close to the king. So another thing to keep in mind, keep your bishop distant from your opponent's king. That way you could do checks if necessary. So by going back here to d3, if they do the same thing and now they go to fork, well, I could easily do check and they're never going to have that perfect position. If they go here, well, now I don't have to be concerned about checkmate or my bishop being attacked or anything like that. So just something for you guys to keep in mind. If we go all the way back, and again, if the person with the king goes to the wrong corner, now you try to make pro progress with your king and the rook, and maybe you get him in trouble. But the main thing is, if you're the one with the bishop, remember what corner you need to go towards. Okay, guys, so here we are, uh, like I told you. Now you're gonna see me playing this against the engine. I'm on Leche, so this is the analysis board. And after I set out the position, so I went to Tools, Board Editor, and once I set out the position, I'm going to hit, uh, I want to be black pieces to move because that's the one with the bishop. I'm going to hit Continue from here versus the computer. I'm going to pick the most difficult one, and I'm going to choose to be the black pieces. Now, notice that I put a position with queens on the board also. Just for you to know, guys, it could happen from any position. I recognize that if I trade, I'm going to be into the end game that I already know. Look, my king is on the same color on the corner that is the same color as the bishop. I know that's wrong. First thing I'm going to do is get the king out of that corner. So now I want to get to this corner or to this corner. Look, they're cutting me off because they want me to stay on this corner. Now I could do a few things to bypass that rook. One of them is put the bishop in the way and I go around, you see? So now he's gonna be activating the king. That's the smart thing to do. And I just bypassed the rook. Now from there, I'm gonna go to the corner opposite to the color of the bishop. So let me see. Uh, I wanna be careful with any pins. So let me stay away from those. Now they could do probably this check. Okay, uh, okay, let me get the bishop away from here. So now I could just easily go here. So you see guys, of course you need to know what you're looking for, but the tactics are important. You don't want to be losing to a fork, to a skewer, nothing like that. So let's see, if I just survive for 50 moves, this game is going to be a draw. So look, the rook is cutting me off, but my king is on the, color, on the corner opposite to the color of the bishop. Now, any checks that the rook does is gonna be from this, uh, from this rank. So I'm just going to try to stay on this diagonal. Now, let me see if I could do, well, let me do this. I could easily just go and stay there. Because I was gonna try to get onto this diagonal and I can just block, but you know what? Let me go here. This is the position that I want. And I have my blockade. Now I just need to hold this position for uh, 50 moves total and I should be fine. That's it, I could, I don't want to remove because I have to be careful, but see, I'm blocking it. The king cannot even add more pressure on the bishop. There's nothing they could do here, guys. Uh, okay, so going back, and we're going to be going back and forth. So let me see if I offer a draw, if, if the computer, well, probably the computer will take it. See, actually, this is going to be probably threefold repetition. That's it, guys, back and forth. Now, look, this is the only thing they could do. Only move is to go here, but there's no way they, they're going to make any progress now. So most likely... Uh, they're just going to put me in check, maybe. I go back in, yep, and then back and forth. Let's see what they do next. Maybe going back here. Okay, so now, look. They're trying to make me make a mistake. Only move now with the bishop. Remember, I do, I do not want to stay too close. I need some checks. So let me just go 
probably here makes sense to me, here makes sense to me, I could even attack the rook. Let me just keep it here, look. Uh, distant enough to put the king in check if necessary, but I don't want to blunder the bishop or anything else. Okay, so check, they're forcing me to go back and we get to the same position. So there's nothing they could actually do. Uh, if they go here, stalemate. Now they're going around, look, check. The king needs to move again. They will never have that perfect position. Now, guys, I'm going to go for a few more moves. If they go here, then I'm, I'm just going to go back to b8. Yeah. Now, if they go down, stalemate, nothing that they could do. Guys, again, this is me playing against the most difficult engine. Nothing that they could do. Okay, so I'm going to uh, offer a draw. No, they're not going to let me offer a draw. All right, so now back into my corner, I could block the check from the rook anytime. There you go. If king b6, stalemate. All right, so I need to get, probably here is fine. Uh, yeah, let me just go here. Any check, I could do the same thing or I could go back here. All right, back into my corner. I'm not even willing to get out. I know that in this corner, I'm going to be safe. Okay, guys, so this is already move number 50 all right guys so there you go so you see they they made a draw i could rematch if you want to try it again up to you but now you can see how it should be pretty easy for you to draw this game now what if i'm the one with the rook my opponent got confused they went to the wrong corner look dark square bishop the king is close to this corner which is dark and i'm cutting it off so it should be my king is also pretty active this should be pretty easy to win anyways guys try to Put this, try to do it yourself, see if you actually can capitalize on this specific position. So I'm going to do the same thing, continue from here versus the computer, the most difficult one, but I'm going to be the white pieces to move here. So let's see. I'm going to start by bringing my king closer and not even the engine guys should be able to defend here. Now I need to think of this idea of the skewers, but they could easily protect with the king. So what if I did something like this? I think this is more like the position I showed you before. The rook is already on the 7th rank. Now the bishop needs to be careful where it goes. So now I'm going to start hitting that bishop. And after that, I'm going to be looking for those skewers. Now, let me see. What if I go bishop here? If bishop g3, rook g4. Nope. Okay, so you see, I'm hitting the bishop. Now, anywhere the bishop goes, I'm going to continue to attack it. Okay, so now... Look, if I go here, I hit the bishop and also the checkmate threat. So unless I'm missing something, this should be pretty easy to do. There you go. We just pinned it and we're going to get the bishop after. Guys, this is the most difficult engine. Maybe they could have done better, but you get the idea. I'm not even going to finish this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just play a few blitz games and maybe, I don't think it's going to happen, maybe we get this endgame, but even if we don't, at least we can talk about other things in the opening. I know that I had told you uh, I'm going to, I wanted to play longer time controls, but since this is just part of another lesson, let me just do some blitz. So let me go to play and I'm going to do 3-2 guys. This is going to be quick enough to not make the video too long, but also it's going to be enough time to for me to explain the move. So on the black pieces, 2275, and I'm going to do my King's Indian defense because they played d4 and c4. So bishop g7, and I'm castling. Notice that they haven't done e4, so I do not need to do d6 just yet. You could do it, but it's not that important. So let's see. Um, bishop g5. Okay, so I'm just going to do bishop this. I mean, pawn to d6. Now this looks, guys. Look, uh, we have not talked about this specifically. We talked about um, the other back where they have e4 and bishop e2. We have talked about these ideas, but I know this person is just trying to castle queenside and probably do bishop a6 and so on. When I see any indication of that, I'm going to do c6, queen a5, and, and b5, you see? Now, I could do... Let me just do this right away. So, I'm not that concerned. When we talked about the same ish, this is what they're trying to do. Sort of like with the same ish where they do f3. When we talked about the same inch, we 
talked about delay in castling, but here the move order did not help. So they're gonna take followed by h5, doesn't really matter to me. Now b5 is doable because the bishop is not open. So I'm just going to, let me see, if I do b5, we trade bishops, h5, that shouldn't be a problem. So let me just get something going on this side. If I just keep it quiet, it's not gonna be so simple. All right, h5 is coming. No, it's not coming. Okay, so b4 or b takes e4. Anything that allows me to create something on the other side. Um, okay, let me just take. Now that king has to decide where it's going. d5 seems very attractive. Bishop g4, bishop a6. All of these things make sense to me. Let me just do bishop g4. Guys, notice how I'm mixing up the plans. And that's what I'm telling you. If you understand the plans, the ideas for the openings that we're talking about, you're going to be fine. Because bishop g4 makes sense. I'm developing, threatening to take on a3, double up the pawns, controlling h5 instead in case of this move. Now, look at this move. If I just get the free knight, they get my queen. So I need to do something about my queen. If I take, well, they could easily go back. And that's fine. Uh, I'm just thinking, can I just move my queen back? And maybe I could do some d5. Nah. Maybe queen a4. Bishop b3. Nah. All right. Let, let's just look. Let's just trade queens. And... Let's see if we can get into an endgame that we are familiar with. Let's see. All right, so if I take, they could take knight e4. Or maybe I just do, yeah, let me just do knight b to the 7. So development is complete. Uh, queens are off the board, so no one is that concerned about the kings. But let me just keep activating my pieces. So bishop b3 might be uh, what they reply. But then c5. You see, they're putting pressure on my pawn. I'm doing c5, getting rid of that pawn. And if I could improve my... Oh, they, they castled finally. Okay, so now take, take. Nope. You know what? Let me just take. Now, they're going to take with the knight. And I'm going to improve my knight. There you go. So just trying to improve my pieces. Guys, look. That attempt to attack my king is way behind. There are no queens on the board. It's not the same thing. All right, let me just take here. If they take with the pawn, that's going to be a nice little pawn. If they take with the knight they allow me to activate my knight here. So his pawn didn't want, didn't allow my knight to get there. Now I'm getting a very active knight. So I like my pieces. If I lose this game, it's going to be because I blunder, not because of anything else. Now, let me see if I hit, they hit knight g3. Now let me just go knight g3. There's no rush to eliminate that bishop. Now my knight eventually could go to f5. This e2 could be annoying. So that's why he's taking care of it. Okay. Let me now take here. If the knight goes, I could occupy f5. If they take with the pawn, it's doubled pawns. Okay, so now I want to get that pawn. They have to be careful. They don't care. They want the back, uh, the seventh rank. Okay, so what if I do this? I'm going to do this because even if they get this pawn, then I get to the seventh rank. Oof, he's not playing. Okay, so let me take. And now let me do this. All right, guys, so the idea behind this move now is, well, actually it doesn't make any sense. I was trying to, if he takes the pawn, get myself to the seventh rank. I'm also taking this pawn, but there's no rush. Well, I'm going to take it. Okay, so that's the pawn he wanted. Now, I'm not concerned if they attack the knight. I could do g5. Now, a3 is expected. Then I have this move doing a skewer. So what's he going to do? Now look, it's not we're not gonna get rook versus bishop endgame for sure, but we might get some rook versus knight. Who knows? Let's see. Okay, so now it's time for me to get out of there, or maybe h6. Yeah. Now I'm not in a hurry. I have 30 seconds, but I have the increment, so we should be fine. Now what's he gonna do with this situation? Okay, I see. Okay, I'm gonna get the pawn. I don't see any checkmates. Or anything like that. My knight is protecting f5. Mm, okay. So what's he gonna do about that pawn? Now I can always do knight g6, but knight f5 check, king f6, should be fine. Oh wait. <laughs> I thought I was doing <laughs> I thought I was attacking that pawn, but that pawn is defended by the rook. Oh, even though I could do again, hit the rook and the rook needs to stay protecting. 
Um, okay, check. Ooh. Okay, now I'm doing a fork. I don't know what he calculated here, but if the rook moves away from the defense of the pawn, I get the the pawn. What am I missing here? Uh, okay, so 24 seconds, guys. This this end game is simple enough to finish it, even with the increment. So it's, as you can see, it's nothing extraordinary, but I think we're gonna be able to win this easily. So it's two pawns. This should be pretty easy. There you go. So, I mean, rook, king, and one pawn. We could think about the, the Philly door and things like that. But you see, my opponent resigned. We just got four points there. And I hope that this game provided something, guys. So let me just go all the way back to the opening. Uh, again, I did not get concerned about that bishop g5 and then queen d2. I just respond with c6. Now, he continued anyone. And when we talked about the same -ish, and I think actually the average back. I told you, you're not going to get checkmated. Queen a5, now they know it's not just about them attacking. They need to also worry about my threats. So bishop a6, I'm not going to take, remember, because they could put the queen here, then the knight comes over. It is a different story. When I did b5 and they took, now my king is taking care of h6. Now, they could here, instead of e3, they could have done h5, trying to open up, but still... My rook is always going to be here. My knight is always going to be here. And it's not going to be so easy. So e3, I took. Then I deployed my pieces quickly. And they offered the trade of queens. If you don't feel comfortable as the black pieces because of the threat of the attack, imagine for the white pieces. Their king is in the center. This side, they already pushed the pawn. This side, my queen is here. And there are files to attack that king. So we traded. Then... I deploy my final, my knight, my rook goes to a semi-open file, and we just play chess. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave it here. I don't want to make this lesson too long. So let me know if you have any questions about this game. I'm pretty sure that I missed a few things, so feel free to let me know in the comments. And like always, I'm going to be replying to your comments. We're going to be talking there, and I'll see you in our next lesson where we're going to talk about a new opening. That opening, we're going to learn it the right way. Plans in the opening, middle game plans end game plans, everything, that way you see a different approach when it comes to opening preparation. So with that said, I'll see you next time.